Oh, hi. Welcome to the Jolly Green Hunting Channel. Today, we're going to be making do-it-yourself homemade decoys for crow hunting. And it's a lot of fun, and it's very enjoyable to do with your family and children over the winter time when the season's closed. So it's something I found when I was young that I really enjoyed. And the man who first took me hunting showed me this little trick, and I'm going to share it with you guys today. Now, there's two different kinds of homemade decoys that we can make. There's two different kinds. This is our first kind. This is our kind that's going to be basically just stationary. And then in our next video, I'm going to show you how to make motorized decoys, but without a motor. You heard me right. I'm not kidding you guys. You guys are not going to believe this until you see it. Okay. But to get started here, but to uh, make your actual decoys for the first time, it's very easy to do. All you need to do is get yourself some either cardboard, starting next standard cardboard, or you can get yourself the foam from the dollar store, you know, your family dollar, Dollar General. They all have it. It's usually like a buck, a sheet. It comes out when you're done <clears throat> making your stencil. Your stencil is going to look like this. And you make yourself one stencil so later you can just keep going over and retracing and making the same kind of crow before it. Now I drew this one freehand. You could do the same thing too and in, in the description we're going to include a link to an outline of a crow that you guys can blow up or you guys can copy or draw, draw freehanded that makes a really good crow decoy. And um, to get started, all you need is just some basic stuff to get at your dollar store if it would cost you under $12 to get started. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys here. I have some already cut out of foam and cardboard. Now, you're probably going to say, well, what's the difference between the foam and the cardboard? There's really nothing. It's just, it's just utilizing things you have around the house that you can use in the field to not only save you money, but at the same time be productive where you know you're going to have a great day in the field. Because the whole, let's face it, the whole point is you want to bring meat home to the family, right? So that's what you want to do. But at the same time, you want to save money. So with that being said, I'm going to show you guys how to get started. Now once you've got your stencil and you've cut out your, your crow decoys, okay, they're going to look like this. Okay, now don't worry, we're going to paint these later. We already have the paint already selected for our crow decoys. And in an upcoming video, you're going to see us doing some yes dove decoys, the same way as we make our crow ones. Now, I prefer to use gloss, black paint, spray paint on my decoys. And I'll tell you why. Because crows, whether hunters want to believe it or not, they have a, a slight shine to their, to their feathers. When the sunlight hits them a certain way, they shine. So when your decoys are in the ground, okay, and the sun is coming up over here, it's going to prevent a little shine on the decoy itself, and it's going to get that, uh, that kind of that same effect of the shine off the, the actual bird's feathers. And that's what you want, is you want that to catch their attention when they're flying overhead. You want them to look down and see something catch their eye, so they will come down closer to investigate it, where you can get the best shot at them. Now, since I've already gone ahead and cut all these ones out here for you guys, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set them up with the sticks you're going to need to put them in the ground. Now, the man that first took me hunting is the one who taught me how to do this, and that's why I want to teach it to you all because it really is effective, and I'm going to tell you something, it does save you a lot of money. And there's a lot of different ways you can do about, go about doing this. And there's a lot of things here on this table that you're going to see that we're going to do that you're going to need a dozen different store-bought decoys to do that you can do with just one or two here. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is when you selected one of your decoys, is you're going to want to decide, okay, do I want this decoy standing up? Do I want this decoy standing this way? Do I want this decoy in a feeding position? It's all up to you. So you have to decide how you want your spread of your decoys laid out. Me, I like a, I like a variety of an option. So when I make my decoys, I put one safety, one clothespin here, one clothespin here. And all you have to do to attach it is with any kind of super glue. It could be any kind of super glue. And if you really want to break out the heavy duty stuff, you can use the goop. Now I use Goop on mostly all my camping and hunting stuff because it's so durable. And it lasts forever. It is very, very, very good stuff and I love it. But for this, just doing your, your decoys, all you need is super glue. And all you have to do 
is decide where you want your decoy to go. In this, in this instance, I wanted this one to be able to stand upright like this. Kind of look, he's just walking around. So what you do is you open up your first. Once you've glued these to your decoy, you open up your first, slip your dial rod in, open up your second. Oopsie, that's not supposed to happen. But it did. And on camera. <laughs> but that was because I pushed too hard. That was my fault, guys. But in normally, that wouldn't happen. But that's an easy fix to do off camera. But again, I apologize, guys. That was a little embarrassing. But as you can see, that's why this one here is for demonstration purposes. When this one's sitting in the ground, though, it's going to look like this. Okay? And then look like he's just walking along the field and just looking around. Or if you want, you could take the same, put another clothespin in another position, and now you have a feeding crow. So you can add your safety, your, I mean, excuse me, your clothespins anywhere you wish on here. Just don't over break them like I did. <laughs> But at the same time, because they're, 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 they're cheap, they're not exactly, you know, plastic, they're made of wood. And so the, the, the spring pop out sometimes. So I apologize about that, guys, but it happens, right? What are you going to do? But for here, as you can see, I added the stick here for a walking crow. And now we're going to add another one here. That's why I have this line here. You see the lines here for the dial rod I have lined up so I know before I even glue where my decoy is going to be resting once he's in his final position. Now to add these clothespins onto here, all you have to do is take a good clothespin, take your super glue, you have your little line here already, where, you already, where we already pre-measured. We know where we want our dial rod to go because we have it already outlined. We already have it penciled out. So now what we're going to do is take our glue, string it along here, just like that. Don't have to go crazy, just a little bit. And then place it at the same time open. Slide on, down, over your line, and position it where you want it to go. That's why the glue has a 10 second delay, so you can get it in position where you want it to be. Now once you get it in position, just hold it down with your finger. That's all you gotta do for a few seconds, just hold it down. But I would definitely let it dry overnight so the glue will get the maximum strength out of it. That's what I would do. And if you have a clothespin that does in fact break, don't panic. You can just pop one off with a butter knife. I'll show you how to do it, and then we can reattach a new one. Okay? Now, when this one's drying, right here like this, you can set it aside and continue on with your next decoy. It's a real easy project to do. It's fun to do during the winter time. Like my old decoys were shot. That's why I figured this winter, might as well go ahead and make a new set. You know, I'm making, I'm gonna make a close to about 36 this time for our first run. And the next season coming up, you guys are gonna see us use these actual decoys in the video. You're gonna see the actual decoys being used and I'm gonna show you guys just how effective they are. And we have some great new products also, too, coming from Kix that we're going to be doing some review videos on. Thanks to our friends at Kix, um, especially our friend Chuck. Um, we send our love out for the holiday to him and his family and all, all the staff at uh, Kix for um, thanking them for help supporting us and our channel. And on top of that, too, folks, everything that we're doing with the styrofoam. Decoys can be done, in fact, with cardboard, so don't, don't be stressed out if you can't get a hold of the styrofoam. I just prefer styrofoam and cardboard compared to wood because I don't drive a car. I drive, my, I drive a bike, and so I have to travel everything in a basket, everything in bags, so it's easier for me to transport because it's not so heavy. But for you guys, if you have your cars and vehicles and all, if you store your decoys in a duffel bag and put them in your truck, they'll last you, you know, the entire season, maybe even the next season. But the, the 
if you have something um, and you take good care of it, it will last you season after season. So let's get back here. I'm going to show you guys real quick how to change out this piece. And we will <clears throat> get started on the next video for you. Now here I'm just using my laser knife to take it off. The glue is very strong, so don't be afraid if it gives you a hard time. It's very strong glue. It's supposed to be. But you have to take that off, just like this. Just peel it off. You see the hole? Don't worry about it, because it's going to be covered up with another, another clothespin. So we just put this on here like this, put it on a little thicker this time. It's a simple fix. You don't need to panic if you have to move up a little further, like this, and put your clothespins closer together. It's quite all right. Now, when we do in the next video, when we spray paint these decoys, this is going to be all filled in with the black paint, so you know you know it's enemy there. But accidents happen, an easy fix, even in the field. So, no one cries over spilt milk, we just fix it. Keep moving on, don't we? There we go. Now, like I said, these actual decoys will be used in opening day of crow season this season. So, you guys stay tuned because we got, some, we got a lot of action shooting coming your way. And on top of that, we got a lot of great review videos coming up from we're doing on kicks, products. And, of course, we always follow all of our states, our Colorado, you know, hunting and fishing regulations. We always follow all those. Now, in our next video, guys, I'm going to show you guys how to make the, use these same decoys. Use these same decoys, these cardboard and foam, and make your own motorized decoy, crow decoys with no motor. Okay, stay tuned, guys.